Nothing is stronger than an idea whose time has come. Network services is the business model most associated with disruptions. Why? Well, it completely allows for new ways of delivering value. In networks, the value is dictated by who else is on the network. AT&T was founded by the inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, in 1877. By 1984, it started breaking up. AT&T had to simplify its value creation. First, it spun into the baby bells. Later, it divested itself of the Bell Labs, the famous Bell Labs, and then finally of NCR. Simply put, the different business models created competitive disadvantage for the whole. AT&T was the largest telecoms company in the world and they had made huge investments into content. Nevertheless, they were not able to be the winners in streaming. Why? Well, they probably focused so much on what they do today and not enough on the innovation of streaming. So the winners, the ones who came out on top were the YouTubes and the Netflixes. And it's often the case, the ones winning in one generation is not necessarily the one winning in the next generation. Someone who didn't miss the boat was uh, Eric Juan, who in 2011 left his job creating software in order to develop what he called happy customers. He created Zoom. The initial growth of Zoom showed that uh, the right for the job type of service could outcompete the bigger incumbents. And then from February 2020, Zoom exploded in popularity as COVID-19 spread globally, disrupting and revolutionizing the way we work. Zoom was ready for COVID-19. It grew from 10 million to 200 million people in meetings in March 2020, and then to 300 million the following month. Is this sustainable? These companies connect people, organizations and places. As users, we always want to be part of the largest network. With competition coming from the big integrated players, how does Zoom avoid repeating AT&T's fate? And how does AT&T reinvent itself? In the network business, winners take all. So how do we emerge? as winners.